of classes. Our goal is to have as much control as possible as the layouts uh, of the layout of the page. Um, and we've kind of followed a path where we start off by just putting a little bit of control over the layout, then we start adding things that control the layout to a greater degree. To some degree, these things can be mixed and matched, but that can also lead to problems um, in, in some cases. Um, the first example we went over was like this, where we basically didn't do much with the browser default. In other words, we followed the basic flow of the page. If you look at the CSS for this page, the CSS for this page really only controlled the width and the margins. So normally, we have blocks stacking on top of each other. We allowed that to happen. That's the browser's default, and that's known as the flow layout, where one block simply flows on top of the other block. But we did put a little bit of control in it, in that we put um, margins uh, on the left and right, and said auto, that will center it. And we um, gave a width to certain elements, um, actually to all of the main elements. Uh, one thing I like to point out is um, when people first learn this, they, they have a tendency sometimes to try to micromanage uh, the page. In other words, um, put the layout on every little item. Um, a lot of times when you're dealing with layouts, you're dealing with the main um, structural tag. So notice what, in all these examples, I'm doing. I'm doing things with the header, the section, the nav, and the footer. Yes? Well, well, the que okay. The question was, how can I change the colors for um, uh, the, the students having a, an issue with um, if they have a style on the body that that's cascading through everything on the page? So let's let's take an example here. Um, probably you have a syntax problem, okay? Because if you look here, notice that in this case we have a body, we have a background black, and we have a color white. If we want to change that for one of these things, so let's say, for example, in the header, we want the, font, uh, the color to be yellow. If I go and save that, the header is yellow, all right? And the body and the rest of the, the stuff is, is white. Um, well, without actually seeing it, it's hard to tell exactly what's wrong, but uh, we can take a look at it in lab. Um, probably something with the syntax of the CSS um, with that. All right. Um, that was the first example. The second example, we did the same thing, except we did a little bit more styling. We put a background image, and we put some borders around things, and we made transparent uh, sections so that um, it could be seen, the text could be seen up against the background. But as far as layout goes, this is pretty much the same as the other one. That is, we go with the basic flow layout. So again, if you notice this, there's more stuff for each of these, but the basic layout has a width associated with it and a margin, and that's about it. Uh, we do have padding. Uh, again, remember padding is the space between the edge of the content and, uh, and the container. The other thing we did with this one is that we put a relative size. So the size is based on a percentage and not a, not a absolute amount. And we also put a minimum width on some things. All right. As we get into the, uh, after we cover layout uh, a bit more today and next time, we'll talk about uh, layouts for mobile devices. 
And one thing that is key is making sizes of things relative instead of absolute. So in other words, if we look at the width here, the width of those sections are 60% and not set to a certain number of pixels. All right. We can also supply a minimum width. So that way it doesn't continue getting smaller until it's extremely thin. Again, I don't necessarily hold this up as an example of great design. I mean, I, was, I created it to illustrate a point. But you can see, really, with just a bit of stuff, you can um, start making your pages look uh, a little more, uh, a little more professional looking, a little more um, well designed. The next one we went covered what we called fixed layouts. And fixed layouts is where you nail down things to certain spots on the page. And they don't budge. All right? Notice when we resize it, they don't budge. Now notice one thing. We do have a little bit of problem with this um, in that that overlaps it. If we're going to fix this, let me go in and bump that down a bit. We do have that problem in this case. Um, do something like that, let's say. There we go. All right. And when we did this, what we did is we gave everything a, and by everything, I don't necessarily mean every individual element, but we gave the main elements a top and a left and a position absolute. And what that will do is that will sort of glue things on to that position from the top and from the left. And it will glue it there. It's in relation to the top of the page, not the top of the window. Um, so when we scroll it and the top of the page goes off, this stuff goes off as well. All right. This layout, again, is sort of an old-fashioned way to do things because, again, a big concern now is with things such as mobile devices and different size screens and all that. So we very rarely use uh, that, uh, the, the, the fixed position or the absolute position. However, it's good to know because, again, your job might include uh, changing a website that was done in this way. So you should at least have a basic familiarity with it. Um, you can do a little mix and matching. I could, for example, make the header, instead of having a width of 600 per, uh, pixels, I could say the width has a position of a, has a width of 100%. Um, the nav could have a uh, width of, um, or the, the section could have a, a width of 40%. The nav could have a width of 20%, let's say. And the footer could have a width of 100%. So I can mix the fixed positioning with, um, relative sizes, and that can work out OK. If we want. All right. The next one we're going to use is called relative. And relative starts with the idea that the flow is going to put things in a certain position. All right? The flow of the browser is going to put things in a certain position. The browser's default is to put things in a position based on simply stacking the block items on top of each other. And that's what we had in the first example. And that's really what we've had the whole time throughout the semester. So I'm going to take layout two, and I'm going to clone it. And what I'm going to do is this. 
I'm going to make each of these a certain width. So it will look like this. Now, if I want the ultimate page layout to look like this, we saw we already can do that with the fixed layout, with the position absolute. We're going to do this now with the position of relative. Because really, to go from this to this, all we have to do is shove this one up and over a little bit and shove this one up a little bit. So if we can do that, we don't have to worry about the position of these two things. These two things are right in the position that they need to be. But these two things, we want to move this one up and over, and we want to move this one up. So that's what relative positioning is. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to start with this guy. And again, you see what it looks like now. I'm going to get rid of some things in the style rule. I'm going to set the width to, of certain things to different sizes. I'm going to even give the navigation a height. Now if we look at this, oh, I want to make this oriented vertically as well. So let me go in here. And I'm going to get rid of the margin, so I'm going to push everything to the right of the page. OK. So this is basically what we want, except we want this to be up here. We want it to be over and up. So what I can do is I can give a position of the section. I can give it a top and a left. But I'm not going to give it an absolute number. I'm going to give it a relative number. And what does that mean? That means that let the browser position it where it wanted to and then push it over a certain number of pixels. So I want it to be up 300 pixels, the height of the nav. So I'm going to say top negative 300 pixels. Negative 300 means it's going to go up. I want to go, I want it to, go to the left, the width, which is 200 pixels. So I'll go left 200 pixels. And I'll say position relative. Oh, 
help position that positive. And that pushed that over a little bit, up 300 and over 200. Now I have a margin still on this guy, I think. No, I don't. I can, again, play with this to get it in the exact right position. So the section I can push over maybe 350 and left over 240. And I can position that yeah, almost there. And then I can push this one up if I want to as well. too high. So remember, when you're using a position relative, what you're doing is you're telling the browser, let it position it where it wanted to put it before, but then push it a certain direction. Push it to the left, push it up. If you do a negative for top, it will push it up. If you do a positive for top, it will push it down. Likewise, if you did a positive for left, it would push it over towards the right. If you did a negative for the left, it would push it towards the left. Um, I actually don't like to do this, all right? But again, um, I think it's important to see all the different options that you have with this, because sometimes it could come in handy. Remember, you can position, I'm, I'm talking about mainly today positioning things, positioning the big things on the page, because that's really what you're focusing on when you're focusing on the layout. We have these wireframes that are drawn like this that say how we want the page to be displayed. All right. We're focusing on positioning the main blocks. But remember, what I talk about with the main blocks also relates to the stuff within the smaller blocks as well, too. So if you want to move something over from where it normally is positioned, you can use a relative positioning to bump it over to the left or to the right or, to the, or towards the top or towards the bottom. The next one I'm going to do is pretty cool. And it is called fixed positioning. And fixed positioning is a little bit different than absolute. Remember, absolute positioning, we're positioning based on the top of the page, which as, the, as we scroll, the top of the page moves up and outside of the window. With fixed positioning, we're stating the position with respect to the window, and it's not affected by scrolling. And this is most useful for navigation, because we can make the navigation there all the time, even when the user scrolls. And that's, that's a pretty cool thing to do. So let's go and do that. And again, I'm going to start off by cloning item number four or item number two, rather. Notice for all these layouts, I'm getting different layouts, different ways, but I'm not touching the HTML. Remember that the HTML is the content, and we're dealing with appearance. We're dealing with the layout. So we shouldn't have to change the HTML to change the layout. All right, I'm going to go and do this. And I'm going to go and edit this. I'm going to change the margins to three hundred. 
2300 pixels. And I am going to give this a width of 200 pixels. And give it no margin or simple margin of 20 pixels, let's say, 20 pixels all the way around. So this is what I have. Let me draw what I want, first of all, so we know what I'm shooting for. What I want is I want the navigation to be on the left side of the page. So I want the navigation to be here. And I want the other stuff to be here. But I want it so that as I scroll up and down, the navigation stays right there. And it doesn't scroll off the page. OK? So that's my goal. All right? And we're going to do it in steps. Uh, and hopefully the steps will, will reinforce some of the things that we've talked about so far and uh, we'll be able to understand what we need to do with that. So I made these changes. And this is what I have. So I almost got it, right? But not quite. I have this over here. I have this over here. I have this stuff down here. And yeah. And unfortunately, when I scroll, the menu scrolls with it. So I got a gap here, and this scrolls. OK? So let's fix that. I can fix that with one thing. All right? I can say top 100 pixels, left. 0 pixels, position fixed. That's going to fix both my problems. That's going to fix the gap, and that's going to fix it scrolling off. It's not going to scroll off because I've defined the position as position fixed. What position fixed means is that even if I scroll, that's not going to move from 10 uh, or 100 pixels from the top, 0 pixels from the left. So it's going to be glued in that space even if I scroll, because I've said position fix. The other thing that is going to do is that because I've now put something about the layout of that element, it takes it out of the flow. Remember that. Whatever your page looks like is a combination of a couple things. It's a combination of the browser defaults and the CSS code that you write. So if you don't say anything about the position, if you don't put any top, left, right, or bottom on it, um, the browser will, by default, use the flow layout and just stack the blocks on top of each other. But now I have put that in there, so the browser takes it out of the flow. So let me save that, and this should be pretty much what I want. All right, there we go. And, pardon me? Is it It'll stay there. So let's go like that to make the window smaller. As I scroll, the navigation stays in place. So you can see that's a particularly good thing, like for the navigation. Or really anything that you want fixed on your page. I could do the same thing for the, uh, the banner on the top of the page. 
if I wanted the header to always stay the same. And I could just make these two things scroll, the bottom two things. So the navigation stays in place because the position is fixed. All right? And there's no gap for it because we have put something in for the position. That means that the browser no longer puts it as part of the flow. Remember, if you put something about the position of an element, the browser takes it out of the flow. If you don't say anything about the position of an element, the browser includes it in the flow. And by the flow, I simply mean that one thing is stacked on top of the other. All right, the last one that we're going to talk about today, anyhow, is probably the most complicated. So I'm going to use a little example before I get into the big example. And this is known as floating. And this can be very, very confusing. Uh, but even though the concept is pretty simple, it can be confusing when you're actually working with it. So we're going to take our time and make sure we cover this well. By the way, anything that I've said about the position, and I've said top and left, that's generally how I see it done and how I do it. You can also do things based on the bottom and the right if you want to. All right? Same thing with floating. Here's the idea of floating. Floating accomplishes what's known as liquid layouts. What do we know about a liquid? What's the characteristic of a liquid? It's fluid, all right? Pardon me? And it forms a shape of whatever its container is, all right? So, if you had, let's say, a bottle of water, and you had a tall, thin bottle of water, all right? The, the water is going to be a column that's tall and thin. If you poured it in a dish that is wide and short, the water is going to be wide and short. All right? It takes the size of the container. That's the same idea with these fluid layouts. With these fluid layouts, the content on the page is going to take the shape of the container, that is, the browser window. All right? So that's known as floating, and sometimes they're called liquid layouts. That's a good trick to, pl to play on people, um, especially like, I guess, like kids that like haven't really formed these concepts, is you can show them, you can actually take a big bottle of water, pour it in a dish, and they'll still say that there's less water in the dish than there was in the big, the big thing, because the, the height just overwhelms them, and they think that that is more, even though it's shorter and wide, but it, it's kind of funny. Anyhow, I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit this. And for this example, I'm going to create two sections, both with Greek text in them. And We're going to isolate these two sections. And I'm going to put the CSS in the same file as the HTML. Normally, it's best to have an external file. That's what we've done here. Uh, but just for this example, I'm going to put the CSS in with the HTML. So this is going to be a float example. And it's just going to contain the Greek text. It's not going to contain all the other stuff. So we're going to build up to this, and we're going to review the flow layout and all that stuff here. I'm going to give them each their own ID so I can treat them differently. Remember, the ID is one way that you can assign a style to something. The other that we've seen have been by HTML tag or by class. 
Again, I'm putting the style right in here, even though normally we don't. How do you assign a style to an ID? You use a pound sign. And right now, I'm going to do, simply going to give them different colors. Okay, so we have these two. Let's go and view it. There's my two sections. All right. I haven't said anything about the layout of these. So what layout is used? The flow layout is used. They're put just one on top of the other. What, uh, how wide is it? Well, by default, it's 100% is the width. Because I haven't said anything about the size of it. Therefore, it uses the browser default. How tall is it? Again, the browser default. Because I haven't specified how tall I want it, it's going to make it that size. All right? And the margins, the paddings, and all that are um, based on the default. And we can change those things. So I'm going to start out by putting on the body, or actually on everything, one shortcut you can do is if you want to make everything, you can use a star. And I'm going to say margin zero pixels. That'll give a zero pixel for everything on the page unless I override it. So everything is up, up there. I'm going to add a padding to these to put some space, and I'll make the text color white so we can see it on this one. And I'm going to say margin, or I said padding, right? So padding 10 pixels. Padding 5 pixels. What is the padding? That's the space between the edge of the content and the content. Oops. So the space between the edge and the content is 10 pixels in this case. It's 5 pixels in this case. All right. I can put margin on these. And I'll do 10 pixels all the way around, this one. And I'll do 20 pixels all the way around this one, or 30 pixels. Make a dramatic difference. So 10 pixels between elements here, 30 pixels between the neighbor. This space notice is 30 pixels. It's not 40 pixels. Remember when you set up a margin, you're defining that this can be no closer than these number of pixels. So the top margin for the yellow section is 30 pixels. The bottom margin for the top section is 10 pixels. It's not going to make them 40 pixels apart. It's going to make them 30 pixels apart, because 30 pixels satisfies both conditions. Right? The top one's at least. 10 pixels from the thing below it is 30 pixels. 30 is at least 10. And the bottom one is at least 30 pixels from the one above it. Well, 30 pixels is 30 pixels. Yes? Normally, would we want a bigger margin, like a project that we're working with, like, for instance, say, I don't know, a company or whatever, would they want more of a higher margin or a smaller? It's all, it all depends on the design. In other words, what you set these margins for. What I'm trying to do here is, is just make sure we understand the language and understand the technical aspect. Yeah, it depends. Remember that um, um, web development is, is again, is, is sort of uh, a, a thing that brings two skills together. It brings the technical skill and the design skill. The technical skill is how to do something. 
So in CSS, how do you put a margin on something? That's, that's sort of what we're focusing on right this minute. The design skill then is, hmm, for this page I'm designing, how can I make the page look the best? How can I make the page more readable? How can I make the page clear how it's set up, set up in the sections and so on? And margin, color, padding, all those things come into play with that. So it really depends on, on what you're designing uh, and, and how you want it to look and, and the preferences of the customer and your own ideas about design. Right now, we're just focusing on how to do things. Um, once you understand the techniques, it's your job then to take it and make it work for a given project. All right. So that's what we have so far. Now, I can give each of these a width. All right. I'm going to go and put all these on their own lines so it's more readable. And I'm going to give them each, oh, well, let's give them a border too, for good measure. Doesn't really matter the, the, the order I put these in. Usually, in my mind, margin, padding, and border all go together, so I would probably put them as being uh, together. But again, doesn't really matter. Border is one of those shortcut properties. It actually combines border width, border color, and border style. So I can either put those in individually, or I can say border, whoops. All right, and there we go. Now I'm going to give a width to each of these. of 300 pixels. Again, I haven't done anything with the layout of this. So the browser will position these using the flow. So it will put them one on top of the other. All right. Now, getting to the liquid part of a web page. In this particular window, these two things could be side by side. There's enough space for it over there. If I had a smaller window, or if I had a mobile device, I might want them stacked vertically like that. So what a liquid layout would say would be that if I have enough space, put them side by side. If I don't have enough space for both of them to be side by side, then put them on top of each other. That's what I mean by a liquid layout. And that's what you get by floating the elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put for both of these, I'm going to say float left. Then we'll see what that does. Weird. Hope I didn't mess anything up. Well, shucks. Well, I blew that one.
All right, let's do this as quick as we can. Let's put it back to where it was. I'm not going to go and do all the stuff I did before with uh, the margin and the padding and all that. I'm going to leave that out for now and we'll add it back in slowly. So I'm going to say one has a background of green, color of white. a width of 300 pixels and that's what we'll leave for now two as a background of yellow and a text color of black okay All right, so there's where we were approximately. Oh, we also had this. Margin zero pixel. To get rid of any of the default margins. All right. So. What we want to do is we want to put this next to this, but only if there's space. If we're like, if the window's at this width, then we want them stacked next to each other. If the window, however, is wide enough and there's available space, we want to put them side by side. We can do that by putting the float property. Or actually, for the position property, we can say, I'm sorry, the float property. Float left. All right. So what does that do? The browser puts the first thing and pushes it as far to the left as it can. The next thing comes around. It sees if it can push it from the left alongside of the thing to the left of it. So can it put it side by side with the previous thing? If so, it will push it as far to the left as it can. If it fits, it fits. If it doesn't fit, it will drop it below. So watch what happens as we make our window narrower. We get to here. We get to a certain point. Boom. It drops below. So the bottom line is if we have a nice wide window, these things will be positioned side by side. If we have a narrow window, they'll be stacked vertically. Now keep that in mind because that's exactly what we want to do when we do mobile web design, right? Because if you look at most mobile web pages, most mobile web pages are typically a single column, all right? Because that, that works well on a mobile device, works well on a phone, all right? Multiple column things work great um, 
if you have a big wide screen and you can put the navigation next to the section and, and all that kind of stuff. But on a narrow screen, a single column works a lot better. And this is exactly what this does. It's liquid. It positions itself based on how much space is available. All right? So if it's wide, it will put it side by side. If it's narrow, it will put the things on top of each other. Now, we can actually tell the exact point that this does this, that this drops below. When the, when the window is 600 pixels wide, there's enough room to put them side by side. How did I come up with that? Well, each of them is 300 wide. And there's no margin, there's no padding, there's no border. So when 300 plus 300 is 600, if there's at least 600 pixels in the window, we'll put them side by side. The second that I get to 599 pixels, it drops down below. Because at that point, there's not 300 pixels alongside of it to put it next to each other. All right, there's only 590, there's only 299 pixels. So therefore, it will drop and put that other one below. All right? Does that make sense? What if I add a margin to this? Well, if I add a margin to it, that's extra space that's going to be taken up. So the window doesn't, the, 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 the second div will, or the second section will drop down below a little bit sooner. Because now, instead of each taking up 300 pixels, there's 300 pixels plus the additional margin stuff. So. Notice there's a little extra space there. As I'm going, it doesn't get quite as small and it drops below because it has to take into account the margin. Same thing with padding, same thing with border. So if I add some padding to this, it will drop below even sooner. Notice that each point is dropping down with a little bit extra to go. Finally, same thing if we add border to this. drops even sooner. Now, I can also make these percentages. So instead of saying a width of 300 pixels, I can say a width of 40 percent. And this gets to be a little tricky, right? Because the 40 percent is going to vary with the screen size. But the 10 pixel margin, 15 pixel padding, and 5 pixel border doesn't vary with the screen size. So it will still drop below at a certain point. So I make it bigger, smaller. At a certain point, boom, it still drops below. I can make this 20%, and at a certain point, it will still drop below. Probably. Okay, maybe not. Let's say 30%. No, maybe not. Let's make it 35%.
there, it drops below. And of course, I can add our friend the minimum width to this if I don't want it getting smaller than a certain size. So minimum width, let's say 200 pixels. It'll resize, but not get smaller than a certain amount. And then it will drop below. The bottom line is this with all this. No matter what we have on it, a width, a margin, a padding, a minimum width, all those things, the browser looks to see if there's enough space to put it alongside of it. It's either yay or nay. If there's enough space, it'll put it alongside of it put it alongside of the thing to its left. Otherwise, it will drop it below. And that's the basis of floating. Next time, we'll take a look at how to use this within our Star Wars prototype. We might also get into mobile stuff next time. Uh, I also want to talk at some point about how you make your website go live. In other words, you develop a great website um, that exists on your machine. How do you put it out there for the rest of the world to see? Okay, we'll see you up in the lab.